Hey guys, Smudge here, back again, uh, back in a TBM at a WIC, uh, flying off to uh, Vagar, Vagar, don't quite know how to pronounce it, in the uh, in the Faroe Islands. So this is going to be leg two of our world tour. Uh, hopefully I'll do a bit better job than I did on the last one. Um, still kicking myself about the, the takeoff there, the rest of the flight kind of went okay. Um, managed to, to get a bit of time in there, Taunton and Neil, which is nice, and also... Uh, uh, Warwick at the start as well, so that that was cool. Um, so yeah, uh, here we go. We'll get this thing started up. Um, light starting to get a little low. Um, so hopefully we're not landing in the dark. We're kind of driving away from the sun, so it might be okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's not faff about too much. We'll get this thing started up, and then we'll uh, we'll get up in the air and uh, and get on our way. So we'll start by switching on nav lights. We'll turn on our internal lights here as well. Crash bar up. Battery on. Generator on. Uh, we'll contact ATC and tell them that we're doing things as well. Uh, Zero seven zero one. Daha November one seven one Mike Sierra cleared to Echo Kilo Victor Golf Airport as filed. Take off runway one three climb and maintain one zero thousand feet. Departure on one one nine decimal eight seven five squawk zero seven zero one. Auto on. Just uh, running through the quick start up here, so wait for the uh, EGT to start climbing. Then we'll move the uh, throttle out of cut off into low idle. That releases the fuel into the engine and uh, should, should come to life. I agree, Jet, I do. Still got my boy next to me here. I would put up a photo, but for some reason I can't figure out how to get it to fit into the window here because the picture from my iPhone is massive. <laughs> okay, here we go. So we're going to high aisle. And we start uh, switching on things here as well. So uh, fuel switches on, autom autopilot trim thingies on, uh, inertial separators on. We'll put on a pedo and other th heating things. Uh, bleed valves open. I think that's all okay. Yep, no other cautions. Everything there seems okay. Cool, let's request taxi. Yeah, what she said. I'm still going to cheat a little bit and turn on the um, the taxi ribbon tape because I don't know these places very well. The map doesn't show the um, the taxi directions very well, so I, I don't feel bad in using them. We clear behind. Yep. Okay. So uh, we'll go ground services. We will request pushback. We'll turn the parking brake off. And then we'll push back to the left as soon as he's connected as well. And then we'll go off that way. We'll go 
the altitude selected. Well, match up the headings and everything like that while we're while we're going. Hopefully, do a better job of taking off. In fact, that's another thing. I'll set the um, thing to GPS. All these things I forgot to do in the last one that led to a bloody awful takeoff, which uh, still kick my ass about because uh, I was hoping to start well. But uh, there we go. So we'll push to the left now. Alright, just letting the dog out. <laughs> Alrighty then. So he's clear and everything else is set, so let's go. Not being told to hold short, but I just like looking about just to make sure that there's um, nothing coming at us as we're crossing runways because, you know, good airmanship, maybe. Bloody hell. Turn. I'm like full, full turning there, and the aircraft's like. No, <laughs> don't want to. Okie dokie, yeah, so. Yeah, this isn't a runway, um, this is part of the taxiway. Not a runway, hence the big white cross there saying not a runway. Even though I guess it used to be once upon a time. What was that takeoff direction? What did he say? Good thing is you can go back up and look at this. So cross one or through contact. Um, one three, so it's that way. So runway one three would be pointing that way, surely. Yeah. So we might need to back taxi up there and then turn around rather than uh, going there. Okie dokie. So we'll turn this off now and I will back taxi up this way and then we'll swing around onto uh, onto one because this will be runway 30 um, pointing this way. So the wind's behind us, not in our face, which is which is bad. We'll get rid of you now. So we'll set our takeoff flaps. Everything else is pretty much set as we need it, so we'll just go down here, we'll swing around, and then we'll be ready to go. Yep, see, runway 1-3. A little bit 
too much break there. Okay, so we'll hold it here, we'll rev up and then we'll get going. So we'll set uh, heading hold, we'll go heading hold. We've got our altitude and set, so we'll set our alt uh, autopilot just as we're getting off the ground. Turn off the initial separator. And away we go. Airspeed's live! It's 90 knots, we'll start to rotate. A little bit of a crosswind there, wanting to tip the wing. Gear up. That's 120 flaps up. Switch on the autopilot. Altitude. We'll see. I'll switch to nav. And then it should start climbing and turning us to go back around on course. At least that's the hope. Sorry, you better. Now the autopilot's going to direct us back onto course, and then it should turn us onto course, and then it's off to the Faroe Islands. And hopefully we'll get there before it goes dark, but uh, the sun's getting awfully close to the horizon over there. Although that does look really cool. In fact, that does look really nice. I like that a lot. Uh, so our ETA is... Uh, 1555 UTC, I guess that's... Uh, yeah, about an hour, about an hour's flight. Map settings. Heading up. This is what happens when you don't run um, checklists. <laughs> Always run checklists, boys and girls. Yeah, I thought she'd give me a uh, two niner. Should have set this really at takeoff, but you know. There we go. Bye bye, Scotland.
does look really cool. So we've got a tailwind at the moment, which is fantastic. I should uh, add on plenty of speed as we start gaining up there. Got an aircraft up over there heading towards, uh, I guess, Inverness. Probably over uh, that way-ish. Oh no, Inverness would be back down here, wouldn't it? So that's over towards um, uh, Uban. I'm trying to think of the places I know in uh, the northwest of Shawnee, Scotland. Uh, Durness, yeah, that's the place. Olapool. A nice evening up in the uh, north of Scotland. So uh, all with live weather, live time of day, uh, live traffic uh, for the most part as well. <laughs> Up we go again. Just keep climbing, just keep climbing, just keep climbing. Huh. That's interesting. One thing Microsoft Flight Sim absolutely loves to do is start you on 50% fuel. <laughs> I checked that I had 100% fuel before I hit go. And of course, I really should have tucked that before check off, but we should have more than enough to get to the Faroe Islands. He says. So let's have a look. So what's our fuel burn currently is 52 gallons per hour. Um, and we've got way more than double that and it's only an hour to where we really need to go uh, so yeah we've got plenty of fuel to get where we need to go uh, there's not really much to look at apart from clouds at this point because we're just kind of flying over water <laughs> Uh, so if, you, if you're watching this not live or after the event, um, I guess this is probably where you want to just kind of fast forward. So I know FLC is the um, it's like the rate of climb is controlled by the power, so it, it locks you in at a certain speed. So if you're doing 170 knots and you hit FLC, you, you power up, um, and then that gives you your rate of climb. Same if you power down, you get your, your rate of descent, um, which is kind of putting us in a diving when we want to power up. 
which is bad, don't want to do that, so I'll go vertical speed. No, it's supposed to be going up to 16. There we go. Autopilots, man. Much simpler in the F-16 way, just flip up one switch and it's on. Job done.
Sorry about that, boys and girls. I just had to duck out there for two seconds. Um, so we've been instructed down to 180, uh, although we should be up 180, although 2926 is correct. But well, I think if we're at 18,000, we need to hold to um, 2992, don't we? Let's see if that holds. Sometimes I think that the crossover between 2992, which is like the, the default pressure and the assigned kind of uh, altitude. See, yeah, so now I'm going to have to request an extra. Otherwise, it's just going to tell me that my altitude is wrong constantly, which is a real limitation in Microsoft. So uh, what I might do is request an extra thousand feet. Right, okay, so I guess we're not getting that, but yeah, because at 18,000, um, it wants us to be at 2992. So you switch to 2992, um, you go above that, and then you're below that. So that there's no <laughs> middle ground when you're at 18,000. Uh, because if you go to uh, what's it, 2926. I'm too high. If I go to 2992, I'm too low, and then I'll constantly get pissed off. Um, it's something I've run into on Microsoft Flight Sim a fair bit, and I, I wish that they'd sort that out so that the, you get a like 500 foot kind of leeway or something like that, so it stops kind of badgering you about your altitudes. But yeah, sorry, I had to duck off there for a second. Um, had a knock on the door and had to go uh, talk to some people. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Everything happening tonight. Yeah, I freaking know. Okay. Tell you what, let's go up 500 feet and see if that fettles them. That'll probably be still too high. That should sort out a problem. Twenty-six knot tailwind there, so we've got a. Let's have a look. So indicated airspeed one ninety, true airspeed two hundred and fifty-six knots, ground speed two hundred and eighty knots. So that's not bad at all. Uh, let's see if we can't push in a little bit more speed here. Uh, we'll push our fuel burn up to sixty gallons per hour, and then we'll know that we've definitely got two hours worth of a uh, fuel and a little bit spare there. So it's what, 15 or 2 now? We've got an ETA 1536. So, okay, that's cool.
Hello. Hello. How you doing, Russ? Not too bad. I was going to come down there and ask what you were doing, but I didn't know if you were doing something important. So. Uh, just uh, flying a scenery scroller and um, yeah, talking to myself on on to internet. Uh, I'm seeing how the P-50 performs near 30,000 feet, and it's actually not bad. Oh, right, okay. Stop playing with like the the turbo settings. No, I just uh, not in the fifty one. You have the automatic. Uh, ah, yeah, two the two super charger. Super charger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but I'm just seeing how the turn performance is up here, and it's got a decent sustained turn rate up here. It feels like, awesome. like it definitely turns better than a jet. <laughs> <up here. laughs> yeah. Also slightly descending, so I'm gonna try and uh, keep myself even. Yeah, it's not too bad. It also doesn't climb too badly either. It Although I am really noticing nice. my oil. Yeah, I'm noticing my oil temperature is not being maintained well by the uh, automatic system. Right, okay. So Up you just will have to like uh, faff on with your prop pit, uh, settings and stuff like that to... Uh... Yeah, basically I just opened it for the minute to get it back in. It was, it was getting toward the red of the band, so I got it up into the uh, back down into the green band by just opening it up all the way for a few seconds. Ah, uh, I got you, okay. Hmm. Click it over. Cool. Have you tried turning off your oxygen yet? <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Hypoxia, man. It's fun. Yeah. Woo. Hypoxia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's my gas looking like? Damn. Uh, you up for um, flying the kind of mosquito or something? Are you doing some boomings and stuff? Yeah, sure. Why not? I'll come down for a little bit. Awesome. Yeah, power down and dive a little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be a minute because it can't really go full fucking dive up here, unlike in a jet. Nah, they might have kind of inverse effects on your wings. Yes. Uh, it's actually more the engine I'm worried about over revving the oh, engine. Oh, over speeding it. Uh, yeah, what if and you like feathered the prop? The dive? Uh, I forget where that is actually in this. Um, the um. RPM gauge, just pull it all the way back. Mm. Uh, the, you know the uh, RPM stick thing next to the throttle? Yeah, you're just actually... Just that back, your... and then that should um, feather the, the prop out. There goes my... There goes my booster. I've noticed it's about 17,000 feet is when stage 2 kicks in. By the yeah, way. it is, yeah, yeah. It's quite abrupt as well. It's like, yeah, you, you, you know, you, you're at about 16,000, you're, you're full throttle, you're, you're really struggling to hit kind of like 40 inches of uh, manifold the pressure. Manifold. But also and then it, it kicks in, it's like 60, and you're like, oh, bloody hell. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's hard. This thing's hard to maintain no slip at almost 500 miles an hour. Cool. That's a good speed. Yeah. I'm going to shallow dive, too. I, I got to even remember where the fuck I'm at. I think I'm going to have to land in the field or something. <laughs> I'm pretty far away from the base. I'd rather get over there quicker. Yeah. I'm currently staring at clouds. <laughs> How's your day been today, anyway, man? You alright? Oh, yeah, pretty good. I didn't. I woke up not that long ago, so. Cool. What time's it over there? Uh, ten something. Wow. Just starting. We just hit daily. Yeah, we just hit daylight savings last night too, because I was up until like two in the morning, and then when I went to bed, I was like, wait a minute, why is it one in the morning all of a sudden? <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh yeah, uh, I forgot about that. I think we did that last weekend. Uh, changed. Yeah, time. you guys. You guys are like a week ahead of us usually, I think. Um, it's weird how everybody does it at different times. It is, isn't it? I mean, yeah. Although they were, they we're talking here about getting rid of um, like daylight savings or well, British summertime. You know, like the clock changes. Yeah, uh, it's like it, a, a redundant action now, considering that modern technology, there's street lighting, and you know, there's no real need. It to, makes everything more complicated already with all the time zones. So exactly, uh, it's like you can uh, be five hours ahead of something, then all of a sudden you're eight hours ahead of something. <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't help that it also actually contributes to higher suicide rates too. Especially the Monday right. after, uh, yeah, the during the springtime daylight savings time slash jump, the jump forward, 
you lose an hour by comparison. So a lot of people, it has been a there's a mental at least a correlation between a spike in suicide rates and heart actually condition like deaths, like heart attacks and stuff like that on the Monday following daylight saving time. Gee, I did not know that because people lose like an hour of sleep. Yeah, it's interesting. Wow, that's but, that's crazy. I would never have kind of put those two together, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're already in a stress, I guess it's like if you're already in a stressful life and shit like that, and I guess and that one thing can might like, tip it over the edge for something. Yeah, well, it makes sense. I cruise power, and I'm still doing 300 miles an hour at well, it's my what, 7,000 feet. Nice. Pretty good. Yeah. Not even a max continuous. Let's put it the max continuous. Fuck it. Where's Sanaki? I think it's over. I think I'm close look, to it. look for the hills. It's yeah, the only place the in that kind of flatland region. Oh, I'm literally right, 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 right over it. Okay. Yep, it's right there in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, thought I was near it. Uh, it's... It's the only way I can find Sanaki is by looking for that little series of like low hills. Um, yeah. Well, there's a series of low hills, and then there's beyond it another series of low hills as well. Yeah. So it's like, I know it's in between the two and near the river, so I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm close <laughs> to the map. Right there. Might as well do an overhead break then. Awesome. I'm really pushing that red line speed now. I want the propeller pitch at maximum so I can use it as an air brake. Yeah, full full prop pitch, zero throttle. Yeah. Well, Close to zero as I can get without making the thing get mad at me. Also, I'm pretty sure that these planes should have a stall horn installed, if not mistaken. Well, it's, it's got a... there's an enemy behind you horn. Yeah, I, I know that one. <laughs> Yeah, that. It'd be really cool if it had that. like an auto, if it had like an auditory horn though. You could like really easily fight in these things. I think. Yeah. Because you'd know, like you'd be looking behind you and you're pulling the stick in here, and it gets progressively well, it is, louder. It is like, quite oh. visual with the shaking though. I mean, it, it does start vibrating like crazy before it. Um, it departs. Yeah, but there's like a there's a fairly small, a very a fairly small margin there though. It feels like. Yeah. Yeah. True. Here. Oh, that's quite cool. See little rain bands. <laughs> Just look, looking out my window here, and, um, you can see like the clouds raining down to the sea, and it, it just looks really quite cool. It's cool. It's one thing Microsoft Flight Sim does really well is the weather. I need to look more into that dynamic weather in DCS because it's. Um... Yeah, no, I want to. I want it to be there. It's neat, and I like the. I would like the clouds to actually change because it's kind of weird. Like oh, right now over Sanaki, it's just cloudy all the time, so you don't get any sunshine. Yeah. It'd be nice to have rain bands, you know, so you can have like rain traveling across the map, but it's not always stuck over one one area. Yeah. 
you have a thunderstorm in one end of the map or and uh be kind of daylight in the other side too because that's kind of how those things would work especially with how large the maps are uh, rabbit was saying was looking into it but he couldn't fathom the the cyclone system um, or moving the, the cyclones about So you know if you set like um like scattered cloud with rain mm-hmm. and then turn on the wind, would that actually cause the clouds to move or is it only under the dynamic conditions that they move? I don't honestly know. I don't know enough about the mission making to really be able to be a strong thing on it. Right, okay. Could be worth looking into. Probably. I wonder if that would. I think it would just move the clouds but it would generate new things outside of where the map is and then just move it in with the same rain and weather though that's the problem yeah so we need kind of a weather expert to do actually i bet you there's a i bet you anything there's a a thing you can download or like oh uh, instructions to give you certain weather patterns based off of the dynamic things somewhere i'm and sure somebody's probably that. figured it out and stuck it on like the forums yeah, or Reddit. Reddit's that. usually a, a, a better place to go for stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, true. But they said you can probably use that for your weather instead of trying to figure it all out yourself. Hmm. Be my guess. Because I'm sure there's like different weather patterns that people have come up with and have mixed and matched stuff up with the cyclones to make it work. Yeah. There used to be a bug with the old dynamic weather that... Um... One or two like kind of cyclonic systems met. You used to get like extreme wind, and they'd get up to like hundreds of knots, <laughs> and you fly into it, and then you'd end up like you're in a tumble dry. You know, your aircraft starts yeah. flipping end over end and stuff like that. You know. I mean, you get up in the Gulf Stream, you got like 300 knot headwind sometimes. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, shit's insane. But yeah, I, I agree. On the deck, you're getting like 100 knot mile an hour winds. You're like, I'm in a hurricane. <laughs> I'm not designed for this. Uh, but it goes from like you know, ten knots, fifteen knots, two hundred knots. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I didn't actually use up all that much gas. I used up a lot of it in the climb, but then cruising around. I mean, the the P fifty one's amazing for fuel efficiency and economy up high. Oh yeah. It's like I, I did a live stream a couple of years ago where I flew the. The P-51 as far as it would go with drop tanks on. And I think I was airborne for like seven hours. Or six hours, something like that, you know. I mean, that's about the length of a bombing mission, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. To, to Berlin and back almost. Uh, I flew around the, the Caucasus map in its entirety about twice. I think it was two, two and a half times. Good God, and that's like, how far? Like, uh, on the way. edges of the map, <laughs> Pam, basically? Or? Um, well, from, um, is it? Tbilisi, Tbilisi, all the way up uh, to, like, way up to um, like Glenda Zinc or whatever it is in the northwest. Okay, gotcha. Uh, up past Krasnodar, make up over to Vodi, back down to Tbilisi and then Bel- uh, Bezlan and around that way, okay. kind of thing, you know. Yeah, I'm just gonna see how far about that. That's 300 from Tbilisi to Glenzik and then Glenzik to like wherever the fuck Mazdak and those is like a couple another like 30 miles. 50 miles, never mind. And they're down past Ma's Dock. 350, 167. So that's already pushing 500-ish miles there. Then back, that's one trip. <laughs> then yeah. back to Tbilisi is another 100. Damn, that's like 700 and something miles of the round, like one round trip. Yeah. You said you did that like three times. Good yeah, well, yeah, Nelly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what well, wasn't as painful as that um, flight we did in the Yak 52. Yak 52. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a fucking freaking orbit flight of the Black Sea and being like at 20 knots the whole time, you know? Yeah. And like 50, but. Well, it's pretty close. Yeah. Not too much one way or the other. Also, there is no Yak 52 on the server, I don't believe. Is, this, yeah. is the damage model for that thing still, like, not a thing? Yeah, um, apparently they were revisiting it to <laughs> bring it up back up to standard. You know, uh, that was not last year, um, but yeah. uh, again, not sure kind of what happened. Oh, I'm starting to get icing. 
Uh oh. That's one thing I actually need to figure out is how to warm my carburetor up because up at 30,000 feet, my carburetor was at like negative 10 degrees. <laughs> I'm like, I gotta fucking freeze this thing if I'm not careful. I know it's gonna do with the uh, the carburetor air control, but I just don't know exactly what I need to do with it. Yeah. Outside air temperatures minus 28, icing conditions minus 8. Yeah, just looked on the side window there and noticed that there was like. Um... <laughs> like uh, formations of ice starting to form on the side window, and that's another thing we need in DCS is um, icing, like icing yeah. and fogging and all that type of stuff. You know, because all the aircraft have that stuff in there. Like the switches go up and down. You know. Yeah, you can use them. It's just you can't really do anything with it. Yeah. I should be getting vectors to. Uh, Start my approach into the Faroe Islands soon. Well, I look underneath of the, uh, of everything to get to the, uh, for the mosquitoes, um, stuff. Start the engine, dude. Yeah. Open the fucking window for that about that. Open. I'll need to figure all that stuff out again. Um, ready for the flight tonight, like dropping bums and rockets successfully yeah, no, and stuff. No, right. I'd probably end up doing that in the P-51 and flying escort, because I'm not as good, and I haven't done this thing enough. Hmm. Was it yourself that was figuring out the rockets last night in the uh, Moscow? Yeah. Yeah, it was. <clears throat> You'll have to talk to rest of us throughout to do it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it wasn't that hard. I think it was just a couple of buttons that were missing. Or... Yeah, it was. You got to turn on the rocket master switch, and then if you want, um, I should probably, I, I, I don't want weak mystery. Uh, and then if you want salvo, you just switch the salvo switch on. It's just you have to have a, an actual button set up for rockets. For rockets, yeah. Specifically, yeah, it's weird. I don't know why, but might sound like the, um, you know, in the warthog, you got that button at the front, like the finger switch above the trigger, something. Like uh, that. yeah, 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 that thing. I have the 14 stick for pretty much all my simple airplanes just because it's simple. Well, F14 and... stick. Yeah, the uh, verbal okay. one. Oh wow, awesome. So, yeah, I use the uh, for... it's actually really useful in the um the P47 cuz my oil... you got like two buttons and a hat switch and a a B downy rotator selector thingy. Yeah, you got your your uh, weapon select which has the depress on it because it does in real life and yeah, then you yeah, have yeah. the the eight way, it's an eight way POV with a depress. Um, then you have the weapon release, which is the big red one, obviously. Your uh, pinky switch for noticeable steering, the trigger, and then this DLC switch uh, button, which is uh, yeah, right with above the, the rotator thing where your thumb is. Yeah. yeah, which I use that for my oil shutter actually in my uh, P47, so it's pretty useful. That's quite clever. That's a good idea. Oh, oh, oh. To... There we go. Run the uh, oh, that was on the one. <laughs> Just looking ahead of where I'm going to be landing, and there's like huge cumulonimbus clouds and stuff in front of me, and it's like. <laughs> 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 Oh, I don't remember which arc rockets are which. F number one, Mark one, SAP number two, Mark two. I don't know what's different. Uh, Semi armor piercing. Oh, semi armor piercing. Okay, okay. AP armor piercing. F maybe fire. Like, no. And then I know semi armor piercing. There we go. Oh, what options do I have? I have two fuses. It's gonna do a zero second delay. 
Jeez, I'm not a person incendiary. Let's go for ground attack. Uh, so we'll go progress approach. Uh, so it's slow closer runway twelve my transition. Yeah, screw it, I'll bring some bombs, why not? Or tail. Oh, I can't. Okay. Mm, okay, so you can't put bombs and rockets on the wings. Interesting. Picture you might be able to just need to add less rockets. I don't know what short tail stands for, so. Like 250 pound bombs. I'll bring, why would I bring 500? I don't know what the difference is in any of these. Trial and error. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I put 11 up. That's a weird. <laughs> I could put a uh, a function, a delay fuse on it, but it goes from 0 to 0 0.12 seconds to 1 second to 11 seconds. But really weird. 11 seconds? Christ almighty. Yeah, I know. I would have stuck it out and stuck it in a bin by then, I Exactly. I mean, God, I guess I'll do a one second delay, but that's like, I'm still gonna blow myself up, probably. Yeah. 500 pound bomb. If it's on a, oh, it's out on a, a bomb rather than a rocket. Yeah, I don't uh, care about the rockets. I'm not gonna do delay fuse using rockets. It's not I was gonna say, because they're ahead of you, so if you delay those by yeah. a few seconds, they'll be exploding as you're flying over them. Yeah. There are delay fuses you can put on rockets, though, which is really weird. I don't know why. I don't know why anybody would do that. I guess maybe like as a mine. I know there are some bombs that are like hour delay bombs. Uh, you can take them in the P-47 and the P-51. And I think those are essentially just mines at that point. You're oh, like, okay, okay there's, a, there's a group of things that are supposed to be coming by this area. It's like a planned thing, I guess. You bomb a road and then a couple hours later you have like German tanks driving over the road and blow them up as they go by. They don't notice it, maybe. Or they think it's a dud or something like that. It just blows up on the guys doing EOD. They'll be fucking up. Encourage laps. Bombs. Cool. Easy. Man, this looks so nice. What are you flying? The uh, uh, TBM nine thirty, uh, yeah. Um, kind of starting my descent down into the the Faroe Islands, uh, but like it's getting to sunset, uh, so the uh, the, um, the sky's quite golden. Um, you know, the lights kind of diffusing off the clouds, and yeah, it looks really nice. But it's like I'm descending into hell, like you know, <laughs> of the clouds in front of me. You know, um, you, you seen the was it the the last Matrix? Was it Revolutions um, of the trilogy, not the new new one? Yeah, not the new new uh, one. But when he's um, flying towards the machi machine city, it kind of looks like that. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he, he climbs up above the clouds and it's like, ooh, dead pretty and nice, and then he falls back down into it. And you're like, holy hell! Hell, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, kind of looking at the storm clouds in front of me now, I'm kind of like, yeah. Faroe Islands are very pretty islands, though.
<laughs> it's all gone dark. Take some time to trim out. This elevator trim is very difficult to use on this thing. You get to, you get down trim a lot on elevator in the Mozzie. Yeah. Can't tell if there's a big mountain right in front of me. There's one definitely off to my left. Uh... Shit, I forgot what I need to do. Uh, uh, turn those on. I almost forgot about my uh, my air filter and oil cooler and <laughs> all that shit. That would have been bad. Yeah, I was at 90 degrees. Good thing I caught that. It's like I have to send it down into Mars. That's neat. It's like everything's like orange and... I don't remember how to charge the guns real quick. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, no, the, gun, no, no, the safety's right there. Herbert, herb. Yeah, it kind of blow the, the bomb thing, isn't it? It's like a flip-down yeah. switch thing. Yep. So fun. Hello. How are you oh, guys? I'm study. How's it going? I'm yeah, just flying the Mozzie a little bit. Yeah. Just been setting up me um well open track with Toby Eye Tracker. Ah, yeah, awesome. right. it's yeah, not working so for you, is it? It is working, but it's still <clears throat> I'm still having to tweak it a bit. It's not quite there yet, you know. Got so you. Uh, well, let me know I've how just, you get on with it, because I might have to do that myself for DCS. Yeah, maybe. I will. I will. I'm just taking a break from it, and I'm trying to have it roughly set up. So before me, uh, wife comes back with kids, you see, before tea time. So if not, I'll have to default back to Toby, <laughs> but not a problem. I know. I know. I'm flying but, um, Microsoft Flight Sim for the first time with Toby. And it, it's, all right. It's, Are you finding a, it? But it, the the head tracking's brilliant, fantastic. It moves mm -hmm. when I move my yeah. head, unlike DCS, which yeah. doesn't. Um, but yeah. it's not centering the way I want it to. And it's like I'll right. look off in a certain direction, I'll be looking at something pretty off in the distance. And then I'll turn mm. my head back and it won't be on center. So it's like it's re-centered to where my head is looking, if that's if it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. The, there's a button um, where you can switch off this, the head centering in the yeah. settings and that, that caught me out I've, um, I've got a, a centering button which I've, I've been tapping mm. religiously to try and get me <laughs> self, you know kind of uh, back to center in, in some sort of degree um, yeah yeah mm. there's some good things about Toby and some bad things I must admit you know it's just yeah. frustrating sometimes I, I, went, I went to the, the Toby game hub uh, mm. to try and faff on with the settings for it it just says it's um native to microsoft flight sim there are no settings oh yeah like mm, that's <sighs> right so you have to configure it within the actual flight sim itself which yeah is probably so I, I had a I had a look for the, the settings in flight sim for it couldn't find yeah. it oh wow yeah um i know euro truck is very similar it's it's native which means i have to go into it to find it and if i'm, if I'm honest I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I can't do that. I can never find a damn thing. I eventually <laughs> found it, but oh, it's a farce. It's a farce. Uh, you know what I mean? Let me go bomb these ships over here, actually. What have they done to you? Uh, they're in the water. That's what they've done. I'll give that opportunity. Uh, almost think that you like, well, I mean, got something against the Navy, Raz. Mm. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the logic there. Hmm, I, was, uh, um, no, I mean, this is the thing was kind of designed for, though. Yeah. A little bit. This is a good navy. You could kill uh, ships with it. Oh man, yeah. getting low to the water. This is fun. Are you getting waves and stuff or anything like that? Or? Uh, I don't have the water set to really high settings at the moment in DCS, just because it, it frame rates. But... Yeah, massive frame mm, hits. Yeah. yeah. And I'm in VR, so I already get massive frame hits. 
And the one oh, thing okay. that with DCS as well is that the water's under everything. The water isn't just where the water is, but under the terrain is water. Yes. And it always yes, renders right. it as well, so there's no escaping it. Mm. Oh man, that's that yeah. explains a lot of problems there. Uh, yeah. if, if you if you crash hard enough, and you, 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 you go through the ground, you'll see like a layer of water underneath the ground mm. at sea level. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I'm not sure if you guys get it, but when you when you go into multiplayer map, I see water around man. But I'm saying to myself, I'm on land. Where is it? You know. So yeah, you're right. I see it then. Mm. And then it then it eventually disappears, and then the the land, the terrain comes along. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's really strange. I just pop my flaps down for a second while trying to arm my bombs. I'm racking my brain trying to think how I switch on the. Um... Is it just approach mode to hold on to ILS when you're landing? I think it might be. Mm. We'll try it out when we, when we go on there, because it's... Yeah, the approach is... Um, not going to be... Uh, not going to be very easy, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if there's anything like my landing the other day, I, I took out an FF... F F Took out an F-18 on, on the uh, side of the runway, but it was too close anyway, so it's his fault. <laughs> <laughs> That's my excuse. Oh, yeah. I think it was rock steady at 12, 12 boost and 2700 RPM. Yeah. Until it's not. <laughs> I mean, well, I'd be a shot, maybe. But I have, I've been literally running it at that, and my oil's staying at ninety, and my engine mm -hmm. temps are like barely even eighty. So awesome. Wow. Yeah, I noticed the other day that it wasn't cooking engines on takeoff as well. Because when it first came out, you're at like fifty percent of the time, maybe a little bit more. When you're running down a runway, your left engine orders will always go pop, and you'd end up flying with that white smoke streaming out of and the aircraft. It, and then, oh, I think I remember. Yeah, I remember when you guys were messing with it. Oh wow! Christ mm. on a bike, that's a hell of a hell of a cloud bank over where I'm supposed to be landing. I'm in like the eye of a storm at the moment. There's just like clouds all around me. Oh dear! I did not see any ground. <laughs> I did ten damage, ten percent damage to one of that big old ship. Oh wow! The big oil tanker. Yeah. Rockets on. I'll turn salvo on again. Amazing how I have to move my head though to get the gun sight. It's awesome. <laughs> Can you not set the special option to auto bring your head across, or is that just not something that you like? I just don't like it. It feels more real. He's like the real person would have to go <laughs> to actually do it. So uh, I just rip it off the center console and glue it in front of me. <laughs> it's like I'm too lazy. Oh, to then your guns are off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what they do? I mean, yeah, maybe. Maybe. For sure. I mean, you could realign them to your. Yeah. So Although I will say good. the the range and base feet for this gun sight is basically useless. All you just need to do is put the dot on the target and shoot. I don't shoot understand that. why they decided to do that when it's a fixed gun sight. It like doesn't really do much for you at all. Hmm. Starting to get a, a bit nervous now. Hey, you'll be fine. If you're on IELTS approach, it'll take you in. You'll be good. Uh, if I can remember how to switch on the island. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I 
don't think I'm going to see the runway until I'm face planting it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Oh, I got plenty of gas still. <clears throat> well, I say not there. Might It'd be, be really right. neat. This thing would be really cool with the uh, multi crew because then you just have the other guy handle all the fucking gas and other issues that you might have. What the mozzie? Yeah. Well, you can do that. Change, change tanks. Yeah, no, but I if to, you have, have someone to... kind of, you know, willing for a shilling to uh, just sit like in the dummy seat and play with a radio. Oh, you could fly it from the dummy seat. That's amazing. Right. When you're okay. just in it. Oh man, so I don't have to worry about it. that's actually really uh, cool. If you tuned into the BBC World Service yet. <laughs> is that an emergency jettison for the canopy? Okay. Actually, I think it is. I just I don't think it's modeled. Yeah, because it's panels above your head disappear, don't they? I think. Uh, yeah, if you were yeah. to grab it, but it doesn't. I can't grab it or <clears throat> click it in the game. So. Ah, I got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have got that door to the right. You can sometimes uh, open. I think you gotta. I gotta think you gotta land before you can actually like normally open it because like. All right, well, I pulled the door emergency. Yeah, I just I tried to open it. It, you, it shows that you can. Maybe you have to grab I mean, it. And you should be able it. to um, jettison, jettison it in yeah. flight because it's how you bail out, isn't it? Yep, I just did that. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone, has it? Yeah, it's gone. It's loud nice. now. <laughs> <laughs> what? I can't hear you. Yeah. You can strafe some ground targets, maybe. Nice. I can see the ocean. Hey, now I can tell how low I need to go. That's useful. <laughs> yeah, I'm like 10 feet above the water, maybe. 5 feet. Nice. Well, maybe a little bit Wait, more than that. Hearing like I'd be hitting uh, the prop. Like... <laughs> No, he's you've got a bit too low. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's there hearing the noise of the prop hitting the water, and he's going mean, to pull up a little bit. Yeah. Well, you happen to catch a salmon jumping into the uh, into the uh, <laughs> fuselage. <laughs> I wonder if that would immediately kill the prop in this game or not. I don't, probably it would. Yeah. <laughs> I think if it if it touches, I mean, if it touches a leaf, the damn thing breaks. Oh, does it? Oh, gosh. Not good. <laughs> you know, like you touch a, the top of a tree, your whole aircraft explodes. Yeah. Uh, Two seconds, guys. No props. Gotta focus on that landing. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, he's black. <clears throat> Seth. Thankfully, I've got a runway in sight, and there's no clouds over it now. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I think it's going to be a bit of a weird approach, though, because there's like a mountain between me and the end of the runway. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, so it kind of like skids us into it. Okay, so it looks like I picked up the ILS. I'm 16 miles away from it. Or at least a beacon for it. It's 
<laughs> I don't like the British airspeed indicators, I realized. They wobble around so much, it's really hard to tell your airspeed. Hmm. Is that not just kind of like huh? well modeled? Is it, you know, would it not just be? Like I think it might be of... just the modeling of it. Yeah. The pre. Woo, that was close. Bailing out of this thing looks like. Oh. Gary? Yeah, he just jumped out the door. All right. So, when did you my, get by the you, you, you bail out. What, what, you're getting hit by the wing or you know, blended by the prop? True. Yeah. Also, my, my buddy didn't get out. Oh. <laughs> He's just falling to the ground now in a minute. Oops. Just hit the wrong <clears throat> oh, no, he didn't do anything. Or Hans, or Hans Nigel. Sorry, wrong guy. Well, I was going to say when you when you uh, when you go to bail oh, hey, out, Robert. you just kind of like shove him into the back of the plane. Hey, Robert. <laughs> Fuck out my way! How you doing, Robert? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell you actually in the channel map there is BBC World Service and Arms Armed Forces Radio if you know how to use yeah. the radio and the Mazi you can tune it in <laughs> yeah I remember you talked about that last time <laughs> I was like oh, get BBC World Service going yes please <laughs> I think I've got something that shows how to turn that on and get it get it tuned in. I'll, I'll have to post that up before we fly. This is a crazy approach. The 47 was a little louder. But then I guess it, actually the radio wasn't, I guess it wasn't that quite that loud. I have uh, heard it before, so. Not particularly the 47s, but the, the Corsair, same engine, so. I still can't wait for the Corsair. <laughs> it's gonna have everything about the 47 that I like without the fucking extreme lateral and uh, pitch instability. Because all the weight in that thing is up forward instead of in the fucking tail. <laughs> Years ago, I used to work air, air shows, and there was a group of Corsairs that used to come into the air show around Indianapolis. Oh, yeah. And we, we would park those things, and, you know, usually when they park, they'd run the throttle up before they shut down, you know, kind of, you know, blow all the bugs and everything out of the exhaust. Mm -hmm. And you'd see people would, you know, because those things are so recognizable, people would kind of gather around it to kind of check it out, you know, as, as soon as we'd get them stopped. Yeah. And when they would run that throttle up, they, you'd see, you know, hats and 
rocks and kids go tumbling by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucking I love that Corsair, dude. I can't wait for it. Like I said, it's it's probably gonna be easier to control, I think, than the the forty seven because the the rudder is a little taller, I think, and larger in general, and more of the weight is up forward, so it has a better stability on it due to the fact that it's going to have more of a lever arm to use to keep it in check. Because the 47, it's got a lot of weight up forward with that big engine, but a lot of the, all the ducting and everything goes right back into the tail, so it makes it wallow around the sky a bit. And They, they kind of don't like how it flies, honestly. It's a pain in the ass to trim out. I think this, this is a brilliant approach. This is really cool. In a market, flaps down, gears down. Freaking wind is surging through this valley again, going from like 12 knots to 20 knots. as much does that have real-time weather on it it does this is real weather that's on at the moment yeah i think there is a hurricane heading that way <laughs> yeah. I, I, i'd agree with that as well like you get the clouds come on land I think we need to back taxi to parking here. Christ, there's a aircraft coming into land right behind me. <laughs> Runway clear. <laughs> Some other player then. Uh, yeah, maybe. They just have like random AI airplanes flying around in the game too. Uh, they have real life traffic. Uh, so if there's oh. actual aircraft coming in to land here, um, it'll represent that. Uh, and some cool. kind of aircraft as well. So, oh, this thing's amazing, man! It's, it's it's really cool. I'm not a huge fan of civilian like flying, but like that is pretty neat. I like that. I'll go park over here. <clears throat> yeah, re real life traffic, real life um, weather, time, everything like that. Man. It's really something. <laughs> God. There we go. Fucking break on. Can't remember what the shortcut key is for external uh, view on this, so. It looks like another TBM has just uh, come and landed behind me. <laughs> Although he's kind of. Floating in midair, and now he's disappeared. Nice. That was really good. I like that.
Alrighty. Well, I shall say uh, thank you very much to everybody watching in YouTube land. And I uh, might be back later with a bit of DCS flying and blowing stuff up in mosquitoes and World War II stuff. So uh, anybody that watches this in the future or now, uh, have a great night.